Good morning and welcome to Abundant Life Baptist Church. I'm glad you've tuned in to listen to us and hear the message. And, and the first song we're going to sing is Whom Shall I Fear, God of Angel Armies. This week has been very, very scary with this whole coronavirus. Working in a hospital, I definitely have seen the front lines of this. This song is the anthem of my life right now. And I pray that as we sing it, that you'll just listen to the words and you'll realize that God is in control. He can defeat anything, including this virus. So we're just gonna start singing and I hope this ministers to your heart.
for this package is still. This is, the song talks about how God will hide us and protect us. And this, with these turbulent times, I think this song is really applicable. is God. We can still feel full confidence that God is still working. And I want to thank our music team for being here. That's all we have here in the, in the sanctuary right now here at Abundant Life. But I'm glad that you've come and joined us today through YouTube, through social media. And before I start, I just would like to pray. Lord, we praise you that we can be still and know you are God because you are God. I want to thank you that you are watching over us in every circumstance. And I want to thank you, Lord, that you are in full control. Lord, whatever is happening now, you will take care of us. You will guard us and protect us. And you will receive all the honor and glory. And I pray that we can be part of that. And that we can experience your perfect peace. So we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's on your mind? Is it confusion? Fear? Are you angry? Are you frustrated with something? Uh, it doesn't even matter that we have the coronavirus going around. These things happen to us all the time. We have these feelings because of the circumstances that we're under. But remember, this type of thinking doesn't help anyone. It doesn't help you. It doesn't change your circumstances. And it doesn't help others get through these circumstances as well. So we need to change our minds. We need to change the way we think. But how? Well, of course, we get our guidance from the Bible. So we take a look at the Bible and it says this. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. I'll be reading from the NIV. So open up your Bible or your Bible app. Get yourself set to read from Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 4. Now, I know a lot of you have heard this verse before. Uh, I know I've preached on it before, this passage, but I'm going to take a little different look at things. 
something that uh, as I studied for this, I realized God has a lot more to say than I've dug out of this before. That's the wonderful part about reading the Bible. God always reveals these lessons to us that we need at the right time. So Philippians 4 verse 4 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So we started at the very beginning in verse four, where Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Now it's interesting, this isn't a command. It's written like it's a command, but it's not actually a command. It's basically an assumption that we're rejoicing. But Paul wants to bring this down, that we need to rejoice in the Lord. Now this word rejoice, I looked it up in my Greek dictionary. It literally means full of cheer. So we get the idea of being cheerful, full of joy and having a feeling of well-being. It's really a state of being. It doesn't have to do with our circumstances. It has to be basically who we are and where we are. And where do we get this joy and feeling of well-being? In the Lord. It's all based on Jesus Christ. And then we move on. In verse 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Well, here's the thing. How do we demonstrate our cheerfulness? How do we show people that we're rejoicing in the Lord through our gentleness, which is our reaction to others and to our circumstances? Now we've seen in, in the times we have with this virus, as well as many other tough situations, that the reaction that we often have is one of fear or of anger. But God wants us to have a gentle reaction to the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Now, what assurance do we have that this is what is to be done and that all will be well? How, how do we know that the outcome is going to be good? Well, we have this promise, this statement, very clean and clear, the Lord is near. And when it's talking about the Lord is near, it means both his presence with us all the time and in the fact that Jesus could come again at any time. So it has to do with his, his place with us, but it also has to do with the fact that at any time, Jesus could come back. And Jesus coming back means that he will set everything right. Everything will be good the way he intends it to be. He will give us our final rescue. And so we take this comfort from John chapter 14. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So we have a double promise from Jesus here. First of all, the Holy Spirit will come and be with us and be in us forever. That's the position he's in right now with us. And then he will come again soon for us. So therefore... We don't have to be anxious. And Paul says this in Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, anxious means literally to be careful. Not careful as in cautious in what you're doing, but rather full of worry and anxiety. It's the opposite of cheerful. It's the opposite of rejoicing. Really, this care means worry and active fear. 
So we're not supposed to be filled with worry and active fear about anything. Fear shouldn't be governing our lives. There's a tremendous effect on our bodies and minds when we have anxiety. There's actually a word, catastrophizing. It sounds kind of ridiculous, but, but it, it, it's actually a word, catastrophizing. And it means automatically thinking of the worst possible outcome and then dwelling on that thought. What does that do to you? Well, it fills you with great fear and concern. It affects your decision making. It cuts your sleep. It interrupts literally proper digestion of your food. It raises your blood pressure and production production of adrenaline while reducing your immune system's capacity. If you want to stay healthy, stop worrying about what's going on. Don't give in to anxiety. And we don't give in to anxiety by responding with gentleness in our responses to the situation. And then Paul gives us some practical solutions. He says, pray in every situation. Communicate directly with God. Communicate with prayers and petitions. It's not just giving God the list, but it's this whole feeling that we have saying everything to God. God really does want to listen to us. When we're afraid, he wants to hear that we're afraid. When we're sad, he wants to hear that we're sad. When we're frustrated, he wants us to say to him, I'm frustrated. Well, but God knows that already. Yes, God does know that already, but it's time for us to say that to him. And we can say everything because he's near to us. He loves us. He's with us. And then Paul says we need to be thankful. You see, gratitude takes our mind off of us and off the situations and turns our thoughts towards God. We think about God when we're grateful. We think about what we've received from God in the past, but because we know who God is, we start to be grateful for what is coming. We can even be grateful in uncertainty because we're uncertain. Our government's uncertain, health authorities are uncertain, but God's not uncertain at all. Being thankful is part of rejoicing as well. We're supposed to rejoice in the Lord, and part of rejoicing is being grateful to God. And then Paul says, now present your request to God. When you make a request of somebody, it's because, first of all, you expect them to carry it out. Not as an order, but if you know that they can do it, you'll ask them to do it, which shows trust and faith. When you request something of God, we're expressing trust and faith in him. We trust in him because he always keeps his promises. And there's a big promise from God. He says Jesus will come again and will make everything right. Our praise, our prayers rather, hang on this promise. We can trust God. He's kept every promise so far. There's a few promises, a few prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled, but since God is batting a thousand already, why should we even doubt that he's going to take care of things? And then Philippians 4 verse 7. This is a big one, and a lot of us don't catch this. We read, okay, I'm going to pray about everything. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm going to give my petitions to God, and he's going to solve everything. And then we read Philippians 4, verse 7. For some people, this is a source of tremendous help, and for others, a source of tremendous frustration. It says, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The result of all this prayer, And giving up our anxiety to God is his peace. You notice he doesn't say here, he'll solve our problems. That's kind of frustrating because, Lord, get rid of the virus. Lord, heal my marriage. Lord, take care of these financial issues I have. Lord, help me with my health. And God's saying, I'm going to give you my peace in the middle of this situation. The opposite of our anxiety is God's peace. It's a peace which transcends all understanding. In other words, I can't explain it, and neither can you. But I know when I have God's peace, and you will know it too. You know why? 
because it comes from God and he is near. You will know. Remember, this peace is beyond us. People who don't know God definitely won't get it. But we will know it. And this peace from God gives us security. And our security is found in Jesus Christ. Our hearts and our minds are guarded in Jesus Christ. And we, song, we sang this song about the God of angel armies. You think about how powerful angel armies are. Well, that's the type of protection, the level of protection we get from God. This word guarded or cared means like a fortress that's not only surrounded by a solid wall, but inside that fortress there are well-armed and well-trained troops. That's the level of protection God gives our hearts and our minds. And it's all because of Jesus. Jesus who is near to us and who is coming again to make everything right. Paul says that God guards our hearts with his peace. Our hearts are the throne of our will and decision making. Our decisions are made based on our hearts. And then our minds are guarded. Our minds are what we use to formulate these decisions. They analyze things. They're, they're the filters, in one sense, of all the situations we're in. All of those will be protected. Our minds will be protected, and our hearts will be protected. Finally, brothers and sisters, verse 8, Philippians 4. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Do not be anxious. Okay, I'm not going to be anxious. I'm going to say no to anxiety and fear and worry. But what do I say yes to? Well, we have a whole list of things we should be saying yes to. That which is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think about these things. So that's what's running through our mind. But then our mind leads to our heart, which makes the final decisions. So Paul says, this is what you're going to decide on. Anything you've learned or received or heard from me in the Bible, or seen in me, in the life that Paul lived and, and many others have lived godly lives, do it. Don't just think about it, do it. Remember participation from the 1970s and 80s? I, do, I won't sing that song, we just want good songs here. But... Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy, think about it. Let that run through your mind. If you're going to stay up late at night thinking, think about these things. I gave a suggestion in, in, in a video earlier this uh, week, and you can check the YouTube channel for that, is that why don't you read the Psalms? There's so much good stuff in the Psalms that will help you. Or, or, or go to a site like BibleGateway.com where you can get the audio Bibles and just listen to someone else reading the songs. What a great thing to fill your mind with. There are so many good songs as well. And you, can, you probably have them on your playlist uh, or whatever. Listen to those songs. Keep them going. But, but these songs which point our minds and hearts to God. Think about that. When you're praying, don't just pray, oh God, help me, God, help me. Pray with thanksgiving and praise. Think about what God has done for you and what he will do for you, and then rejoice in the Lord with that. Demonstrate your gentleness in every circumstance. And think about the fact that the Lord is with us and will come again. Run these things through your mind instead of negative outcomes filled with fear and anxiety. And whatever you're learning from the Bible and others that aligns with these truths, put them into practice. Make decisions based on what is true and good. And what's true and good is defined by the Bible. Remember that. Don't go by what popular demand is or whatever. No, the Bible clearly states what is good and true. Follow that. Make decisions that are not based on fear, but rather what is truly beneficial to yourself and others. 
and make decisions that bring glory and thanks to God, not only from you, but will your decisions lead others to glorify God? What are the greatest commandments? To love God with your entire being, to love your neighbor as yourself. So think about those things which actually express love to God and that which actually express, expresses love to your neighbor. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, who's your neighbor? According to the Bible, anybody who's not you. So love God and love everyone else. Sometimes that's going to mean a ton of patience you don't have. And, and to all you moms at home with your school-age kids, yeah, a lot of patience and love. When you're dealing with circumstances like the stores being closed or you have to stand in line or something happening, just calm down and be the source of peace where people could look at you and go, oh, what's that person have? Maybe you're in a workplace where you have to be there and there's this constant threat sitting around. Why don't you be the person of peace? True peace that comes from God. Pray. One of the most loving things you can do for God and for others is to pray. Talking to God. And talking to God about others. So here's a reminder that Paul finishes all. He just wraps this up perfectly. Verse 9, and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace, the very source of peace, his very being is peace. He will be with you. God is near. God is peace. If you're watching this right now and you're saying, okay, Brad, you say all of this is in Jesus Christ. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I'd like to just say something very simple. Jesus Christ died for our sins. You see, sin is the source of everything that's going on right now. All the bad in the world is traced back to sin. And sin isn't just the bad stuff we do. Actually, the bad stuff we do and say and think is the result of sin. It's just like the coronavirus produces symptoms. The symptoms are not the coronavirus. But the coronavirus produces those symptoms. Sin is the disease. The bad things we say, do, and think are the symptoms of that disease. But our sin and this sinful nature and this sinful state has caused all of creation to be completely messed up. We're separated from God. We're separated from one another. We need someone to pay the price to cover the debt of sin. And the wages of sin is death, so someone has to die. Jesus Christ came and died for our sin. And when he died for our sin, he paid the price that God required. And then in John 3, we read this. A very important verse, it's familiar, but listen very carefully. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that's Jesus, that whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Saving the world means saving everything, reconciling all things to himself. But there is something very important that we need to remember. In verse 18, whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned. So we have a gift from God, but listen carefully, whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Do you want full salvation? You need to believe in Jesus alone. There's no other one who can save you. There's no other one who has the ability to save you I can't save you, your friends can't save you, the government won't save you, a church won't save you, only Jesus Christ. It means you have to recognize you're a sinner. If you think you're okay, you're not okay. You're in deep trouble still. Recognize you're a sinner, believe the fact that Jesus died for your sins and is the only way, and then you'll be saved. But then, 
Here's another thing for all of us. Let's share this good news. Share with people that there is true peace. Be the person of peace who declares about our God of peace. And then we can truly honor God and glorify God together. Let's pray as I pray. The music team is going to come up. We're going to have one more song. And then I have a few things to say as we wrap up our time. Lord, we're so thankful that you are our peace and that we can trust you and believe in you and experience your peace. Lord, no matter what the circumstances, help us to be strong in the Lord. Help us to be careful and wise in all of our decisions. But Lord, may we not forget that you are our peace that passes all understanding. You are with us. You are near. You're near right now, and you are coming soon. And maybe, Lord, this is one of your signs that you are coming soon. Help us, Lord, not to lose this opportunity to share the good news that there is peace. Peace through Christ. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The last song we're going to sing is called The River. And just listen to the words. This is a very, it's a very powerful song. something, a word of encouragement. Uh, also check on uh, social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We have regular messages and announcements coming out all the time. We want to stay in contact with you. 
We also want to remind you that you can still be giving to the church at donations at albc.ca, and I'll have the link below in the description of this video, you can give. Uh, we need to continue to give, and there's also an extra need is that we've had several calls from the community already for some help uh, through our benevolent fund. It's our privilege to give and present this witness to people. In fact, the day we had that opportunity to give to somebody uh, who was really, who had really run out of everything. And it was a wonderful experience to not only bring some food to them, also bring a Bible, bring some literature about Jesus Christ, and then pray with them because that's really what they needed. They needed some peace. So please remember that you can still give if you want to mail in a check or drop it off here at the church, please do so. Uh, I have contact information in the uh, uh, links below and uh, I would love to be able to continue to be in contact with you. In the meantime, be praying and uh, give someone a call. Let them know that you love them, that you care for them, and you're praying for them. And as always, wash your hands. Peace to the brothers and sisters in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love.